I'm going to read one verse. It's Jeremiah 15, 16. The scripture says this, Your words were found, and I ate them. And your words became for me joy and gladness in my heart. Your words were found, and I ate them. And your words became for me joy and gladness in my heart. Jeremiah is the prophet of the Lord. Jeremiah has to rise up and tell people the things that they don't want to hear. He prophesies the judgment to come because of the rebellion of the people. But for Jeremiah, and the whole context of this chapter is Jeremiah feels that affliction. He, he's taking the persecution. There, there's a tangible suffering toward him because though he's well known, he's treated as if he's unknown. Though he, he's known by many, people don't like the message that he brings. And so what is his comfort in his affliction? It reminds me of Psalm 119. Your comfort in my affliction is your words. And Jeremiah found the words of the Lord and he ate the words of the Lord and his words, be, the words of the Lord became joy and gladness in the heart of Jeremiah. And I'm here to tell you, if the words of the Lord are not joy and gladness to your heart, you are backslidden. You are backslidden. If the words of the Lord are not your prize daily, you are backslidden. You're on the way to hell. You have nothing to do with Jesus Christ. The... Jesus, in the, book, in the book of Revelation, in his letters to the churches, I'm here to snatch some people today. We need to be strengthened. The hour's late and we're still wanting to fool around. COVID was one of the worst feelings that has ever hit this planet when everything you hold dear is shut down. Terrifying that you can't even go in with your wife to the hospital because two people can't even be next to each other. Now, that didn't happen for me. I'm saying there were stories like that, just crazy stories. You can't visit people who are sick. But all of a sudden, we get a little bit of a, of a reprieve, and we want to we wanna just fool around again. In the days that are ahead, if these words are not your delight, you won't make it. You will not make it. And I'm not going to make up scenarios because the Bible says to meditate on what is good, what is honest, what is a, a, a upright report. Think on good things, right? But the Bible also tells us to be sober-minded, to be watchful, lest you be caught off guard. Jesus was warning his disciples, saying that there's coming a time, they're going to kick you out of the synagogues, they're going to try to kill you, and they're going to think that they're doing God a service. Talk about deception. And I guarantee you, if these words are not your delight, you will deny Christ to save your life. I promise you that. If we can't stop watching rated R movies, we're not going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? If we allow perversion on our television, we cannot serve the Lord Jesus Christ. If we attain, entertain wicked imaginations in those movies of adultery, of, uh, of lust, of all these things, we cannot follow Christ. He died to do away with it, and we are indulging in it. And I, I'm not going to go light, because there are lots of churches where people are, are just flooding themselves in, with entertainment, and, and I, they're really idol worshipers, is what people are. If you spend more time on the things of this world than the things of God. If those things bring you peace, but thinking about reading the scriptures and, and knowing God more doesn't bring you peace, that's idolatry. If having more money is going to bring me more peace, that's idolatry. If I must have immorality to have joy, that's idolatry. The true Christian life is like this. Here's an example. That in the Middle East, a lot of times, they will not baptize you unless you commit to dying for Christ. Because it's going to cost you everything. And in America, Jesus is not telling us to bring people in with a bunch of fluff and then to keep them here with a bunch of fluff. He wants the sword of the Lord back in the church. He wants the word of God to pierce hearts like it always has. He wants a people fully committed to him. And if you're not fully committed to him, he doesn't want you there. He doesn't want you there. This is not just so you can have a shot of peace to make it through your life. You're not supposed to have a life anymore. 
It's supposed to be in him. The scripture says Christ is our life. And I'm just telling you what the Lord tells me. For me. So I pass it on to you. That we've got to get to this place. Beg God to get to this place. That your words were found and I ate them and your words became for me joy and gladness. Doesn't that sound nice? Who wants to be joyful? Who wants to be glad? Okay. You have no idea what you're missing out on when you don't make this the priority of your life. And that's from somebody who loved the filth of this world. But you know what Paul said? This world is crucified to me and I'm crucified to it. I don't find satisfaction in the flood of filth in this world. Pastor Mike was reading it the other day. Paul was in perils and perils and perils and perils and perils. Hard times. But you know what Paul's delight was? In the law of the Lord. And in it, he meditated day and night. And he was fruitful in all his endeavors and had much fruit to eternal life. So much so, he had confidence that it's better if I go so I can be with Jesus. Because I already know I got a lot of rewards waiting for me. But that only comes when you give him your whole life. You know why Christians aren't joyful? They're still alive when they're supposed to be dead. They still have an opinion when theirs is supposed to be in the trash. Right? We submit to whatever Jesus Christ says. 